So my name is Ronald Chiguri Jr., Vice Chairman of Eco Atlantic City. Um, I overlook uh, many aspects of the city, uh, from investor relations to uh, sales and marketing to uh, technical and also new developments happening inside the city. Okay, and um, tell us, what, what is the grand vision of Eco Atlantic? So, uh, first of all, Eco Atlantic was initially built uh, as a defense to coastal erosion for Victoria Island and parts of Lekki. Uh, but the idea was how do we reclaim all the land lost over the past 100 years due to coastal erosion, make a full uh, long term protection, very long term protection, and eventually become a business center for West Africa and eventually Africa. Okay. So, Lagos deserves to have a brand new uh, financial and business district, which okay. Eco Atlantic could become. And so, so far, what, what have the biggest challenges been? Uh, initially, we, you know, when, we're, when we were fighting the ocean, uh, that was, it took us a few years to master the, this, this technique. But once we mastered it, we, now we understand it very, very well. So, uh, technically, initially, there was some, uh, we had to, to learn. There was, a lot of, there was a steep learning curve. But today, uh, whether it's building the, the state-of-the-art infrastructure or uh, seashore protection, we know how to do this very well. That's the first step. The second step is uh, a question of what's really happening in Eco Atlantic. How do we get the message out to the world? Because as you noticed, as much as we can show you videos, it's very different than when you actually come on site and appreciate how much work has been done on Eco Atlantic. Okay, so um, let's talk about Nigerians and Nigerian now, right? They, how how do you convince them that this this project is good for them? Because for a lot of people, it's it's too expensive, right? But how do you convince them that this is good for them? So um, first of all, it's what we do. Our core business is we sell land to developers. Uh, we then invite developers to build. Now, we've been seeing a lot of demand for all sorts of products, whether it's high-end residential, but at the same time for smaller, very efficient, uh, uh, smaller un um, uh, units, apartment units, whether it's one bedroom, studio apartments, two bedrooms. And there's going to be a very big, much bigger market for that. Uh, at the same time, in terms of affordability, we invite for innovation. For example, in the office space, shared office space allows for a very low entry point for a startup to come in or for any company to come into Eco Atlantic. So it, it comes down to innovation. Um, Eco Atlantic is a future. We have the infrastructure is state of the art. Um, and the more people come in, the more people actually see, understand this. And that's why we see a lot of uh, interest, of, especially now, for uh, movement to Eco Atlantic. Okay, so something, something that I think about a lot is what what is the um, what is the what will be the contribution of the city to Nigeria's economy? How do you see Eco Atlantic impacting Nigeria's economy, say, in the next five, ten, even a hundred years? So, uh, first of all, uh, the the building of Eco Atlantic on its own will create a huge. Uh, it's, it's a job. It's a massive job creation uh, process. Uh, during the construction phase, there's a lot of job creation. Then eventually, Is by it, can you estimate how many jobs so far have been created directly or indirectly? I mean, there there have been thousands of jobs already. Like, and we, we can get to the tens of thousands if we add indirectly because of the supply of material, the know-how, the consultants. Uh, uh, it goes on, and uh, the more we advance, and the more construction comes up, like uh, the building uh, here from one of our developers, the more jobs are going to be created. This is direct construction jobs. And uh, as we know, Nigeria has a huge shortage of, uh, of homes. Uh, so just the construction industry can transform the, the employment landscape of Nigeria directly and indirectly with all the supplies of material, the consultancy, etc. And Nigeria is a very fast growing country. We're, we're 200 million people today. We will reach estimates, the high estimates are 1 billion by the end of the century. So the, if the country is going to grow by five over the next 100 years, Every 10 million people or 50 million people uh, that come in, uh, that, that are born, that's huge amount of requirements in terms of infrastructure, in terms of, uh, of uh, housing. And Eco Atlantic is an example of what needs to be done uh, for, for the country. Okay, so is, but is, is, there a, um, is there a deliberate effort to bring in, say, Nigerians into the, um, into the fold, like um, offering percentage of um, the job 
vacancies to Nigerians? Is there so far? So far, Eco Atlantic has been probably 95% Nigerian, maybe more. Whether it's job creation, whether it's uh, whether it's uh, investors, whether it's developers, our, our core market has so far been Nigeria, and as well that uh, that applies for Eco Atlantic. 90% of the work done here is done by companies in Nigeria or ourselves internally or our teams that we built that we that we built for Eco Atlantic. The only element, the major element that uh, that we that is outsourced is the sea reclamation because that's very specialized. Other than that, we produce our own concrete blocks. We can, we even produce our concrete poles. We concrete any any underground pipes, most of them are produced in-house in Nigeria. All right, let's 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 talk about the housing deficit. Um, the last I think the last um, research um, figures put the deficit at 70 million thereabouts. Do you see this figure falling anytime soon? I don't because the supply, so w w the figure was a few years ago 17 million to 20 million. Yeah. That's a few years ago, it was 5 million in Lagos alone. Uh, that was when the population was less than 200 million people and when Lagos population was less than 20 million people. We're, we were, per, per, I think, at 15 million people back then. And the supply is nowhere near the demand, the growing demand. Uh, things that can help, for example, is if at some point there's a solution that comes up for the mortgage industry. That would completely revolutionize the, the market. Um, the amount of mortgages in Nigeria as percentage per GDP is tiny compared to South Africa and much, much smaller compared to the US. So we have a long way to go. If that, if that industry, for example, kicks in, it will ease home ownership, which will then create a, a huge amount of uh, construction uh, projects throughout the country. That's for the housing deficit. And that's job creation, which then creates a lot of, there's a whole positive cycle that comes out from that. Okay, and um, so far, yes. what, what have the most exciting aspects of the project been for you? Uh, it's really a learning experience. Uh, today, we're, for today, it's it's in, it's an internationally recognized uh, project. Um, it's uh, due to to the size of it, due to the location, and also the quality of it. Um, but it forces us to also think ahead of the ahead of the curve. Uh, transportation is changing very fast with ride sharing. This is my favorite example. Uh, 10 years down the line or 15 years down the line, if autonomous cars, for example, kick in, what's that going to do to the, industry, to the transportation industry? Are we going to all want to have our own cars? That changes the way we have to design our city, our roads, our parking spaces. Um, if we are looking at technologies like 5G that will be coming in in the, in the near future, that opens the door for Internet of Things. How is that going to play a role in, uh, in, a, in a city? So we have to keep these things in mind. We have to have the base infrastructure that allows for that in the future. And um, it goes on, even in simple things like how are we going to be living? Are we going to be living in big apartments? Are we, do we have to start thinking at micro apartments like in New York or like in Hong Kong? Uh, are we looking at shared living as well? This is a new concept coming out of in Europe. Still early days, but are, we going to, are startups going to create a Nigerian version of, uh, of shared living? And that would be, that could have a huge impact on the housing industry. Uh, do, most of the amenities in a home, in a home are not used 90% of the time. So what if those were shared amenities? A kitchen, for example. A centralized kitchen versus every apartment having to have its own full, fully equipped kitchen. That becomes efficient. So if we start thinking a bit like that, in, the, in that direction, we have a lot of talent in the country that can start finding innovative solutions for that. Okay, and um, last question. What do you love most about your job? Just this, it's all in, like it, it, there's a lot of innovation that's going to kick in. Uh, as I, I often say is we're coming in, let's say, on the later stage of city development, which means we get to learn from a lot of the cities built in the past 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, and we get to stay ahead of the curve and leapfrog, basically, a lot of the technology applied in cities. Our, the first buildings are straight out of the construction, energy efficient because that's the standard today. Ten years ago, it would have been a lot more difficult. Today, it's, that's a basic requirement. So we end up having an energy, city, energy efficient city from day one, and we get to benefit from all the new technology coming in. And that makes it exciting. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, David.